CataractCoach.com. Complete cataract case. There's no need for a pupil ring. Let's show you how to chop the nucleus in the bag in a patient with floppy iris syndrome. So starting off at the beginning of the case, there's the paracentesis. You can see that the dilation looks pretty reasonable. This patient got a lot of phenylephrine and tropicamide in the pre-op area before surgery and got reasonable dilation. But we do know the patient has a long-term use of tamsulosin or Flomax, and we're expecting floppy iris syndrome. So we put anesthetic inside the eye. Here's the viscoelastic. Notice how we can do some viscomidriasis with that dispersive viscoelastic, get the pupil a little larger. Now here it looks like a pretty reasonable pupil, but we know for sure in these patients, the pupil is gonna come down. Making the main incision here, a steel keratome being placed there temporarily, a nice single plane incision with a nice tunnel length that looks good. Now important to get a good capsulorexis. We want about a five, maybe five and a half millimeter capsulorexis. Measuring there with the forceps, it also shows us that that pupil dilation is just a little bit more than five millimeters. This is a hyperopic patient, a small eye, the white to white's a little smaller. So if we trace this rexus just about at that pupil margin, that should give us about a five millimeter capsular rexus. And that's going quite nicely. You'll see it doesn't look like much of a cataract now because the red reflex is so bright. But as we start to chop this nucleus, you'll be able to determine the level of nuclear density. So that looks very nice. I've shown you videos in the past where we prolap the nucleus partially out of the caps or bag. In this case, we're gonna leave it in the caps or bag. And the reason is this patient's hyperopic, putting in a 26 diopter IOL for an out outcome of about Plano. So a little bit of hydrodissection, tapping the nucleus. You can see the pupils already coming down. And this is because we've lost some of the viscoelastic that was giving us that viscomidriasis. So slow and steady, getting good fluid waves, and the AC is a little on the shallower side, so we're being careful here. Let's see if we can rotate it, there it is. Now we've got about a four millimeter, maybe four and a half millimeter um, pupil opening. A Little more viscoelastic there, and we're gonna chop this nucleus in the capsular bag. Again, the anterior chamber is relatively shallow, only 2.2 millimeters, so we don't wanna prolapse the nucleus. So getting our phaco probe, we're gonna use high vacuum, about four or 500 millimeters of mercury, high flow, 40 cc's a minute, buzz into the phaco probe to hold the nucleus. Chopper goes in and we can split this nucleus right there in the capsule bag. Now we take our time to really make sure we split the two halves, and then we can bring the first half up with the high vacuum level, use the chopper, and then chop off small pieces. And so we're gonna do that and remove one hemi-nucleus first by chopping it up into smaller pieces trying to stay in the center here, the deepest part of the anterior chamber, and we'll slowly bring those pieces towards the phaco tip. Once we have that first hemi-nucleus removed, there's obviously a lot more room in the capsule bag, so it's easier to buzz into the second hemi-nucleus, bring it up, and we can either just emulsify it with the probe, or we can sub-chop it. Notice how the chopper is being used to push nuclear pieces towards the tip. Also, look when we change any fluidic currents in the eye, how you see so much mobility of the iris. So bringing that nucleus around, I think it's helpful for beginning surgeons or novice surgeons to see the entire case start to finish. Now taking out the epinuclear shell, very careful to bring it centrally. I don't want to place the phaco tip under the iris where I can't see it. Remember, if this phaco tip comes in contact with the capsule, it'll probably damage it. So here comes the rest of that epinuclear shell. Notice the chopper in the safe position just to prevent the capsule from coming forwards. Now we're definitely down to about a four millimeter pupil or a pinch less. And we'll switch to the IA probe. And now we want to keep track of the cortex in our mind to make sure we're not going to leave any behind. And we'll also check at the end. So here using a coaxial IA probe, we're gonna go and start aspirating the cortex out. In this patient, we're using a larger 2.75 millimeter incision and the incision's at the 180 degree meridian because this patient has about 0.75 diopters of against the rule astigmatism. So removing that, that looks pretty clean. We'll place the lens in the capsule bag as well. So let's fill that bag with our um, cohesive viscoelastic. Get a big fill here. Get a big fill here, and now we'll put the viscoelastic in. That looks great. 
And that also gives us a little bit of viscomedriasis of the pupil. Here comes the lens. We're going to implant the lens now. Lens is going right inside the capture bag. Now, is it totally in the bag? We have to make sure. So we're going to place the chopper here and use that to dial in this trailing haptic before it opens up. And we can center up the lens, make sure that haptic unfolds, and then what we're going to do is use that chopper and lift the iris. And we can make sure that the lens is in the capture bag behind the rexus. We can also make sure there's no residual lens material or cortex that's hidden underneath that iris. So now the lens is beautifully centered. We've also rotated it so the haptics are at the patient's 12 and 6 o'clock positions. So sweeping around here, making sure there's no retained lens material, which is good. And also we can see the optic is behind the capsular rexus. Very important. You don't want to end up with this lens in the sulcus. That will pose many problems later. Remember, never put a single piece of acrylic lens in the sulcus. Even half in the sulcus is not good. So now we'll take the IA probe and we're going to go behind the IOL optic to remove viscoelastic. So going inside here, lifting the optic up, and remove the viscoelastic. That's also the reason why we wanted the haptics 90 degrees away from our main incision. So it allows us easier access underneath the optic to remove that viscoelastic. Finishing up the case here looks pretty good. Now you see the pupil really has come down. And when we take out the infusion from this IA probe, you'll notice the pupil come down even more. Look at that, even more. Because remember, with the infusion probe in the eye, the IOP is very high. 40, 50 cc of millimeters of mercury is very typical. Hydrate the incision nice and easy. And now let's go in through the side port, and we can hydrate that, and we can also sweep, make sure there's no retained viscoelastic. So I trust that this video was helpful for you. It's very important for our novice or beginning surgeons to be able to see an entire unedited video start to finish. This is about seven and a half minutes, so a little longer than our typical case, but a really beautiful outcome for this patient with a Flomax history and floppy hour syndrome, syndrome and luckily, no need for a pupil ring. Thanks for watching.